Hey YouTube, my name is Steph, and today we're going to be doing another costume breakdown on Captain America. Now this one is different than I've done in the past because, um, as you can see here, I started with one of these spandex shirts that you can buy. You see them on ads all the time. That's what kind of inspired this whole thing to happen was that one shirt, and I thought if I could take that one shirt, I have a fairly decent build still, and I thought if I can take that shirt and then just kind of you know, put some accents on it. This could really, really look cool uh, as a costume. Not every costume has to be full board, super detailed, the exact cloths of the actual movie. Uh, sometimes you can kind of, I don't know, you can not cut corners, but you can find simple things that can, um, can add to your piece, but you can also add some details on top of that that makes it ultimately cool this costume as a whole in terms of like halloween or anything is the most popular amongst the kids kids will literally spot me across a, a long distance away and they actually believe that i am captain america i'll show you a picture that i did with that studio lighting that i talked about so many times and it really had this cool effect and it, it actually it actually looked pretty pretty darn sweet and you could do pictures like that uh, with the lighting that I talked about in, in the past um, on a previous video I can put that link in the description below too if you want to check that out uh, but let's break this down um, so it all started with that inspiration that one inspiration picture so probably the point where I cheated the most was this spandex suit but when you put it on or the spandex shirt uh, all the details are there there's only one minor note um, that I wanted to kind of point out that I'll point out right now. Um, the patterns in which the back portion or even the belt, the belt is here printed onto the shirt, but I decided to make my own belt that would sneak right on top of it. And as well as this kind of um, this leather piece in the back here, it doesn't quite cover the emblems in the back. I won't even show it to you. Um, but it just it kind of fits pretty nice but um at the end of the day i can put the shield on my back and it'll cover kind of all those details um but that's the only thing i thought about these shirts is that you know originally they got the wrong size for me and then they sent me another one and between the two like between the medium and the small the pattern the sewing pattern is is, is really not the most accurate um, but as a whole as a at a distance these shirts look pretty dang awesome so let's break this down even more before we get to all the kind of handmade details that I made uh, let's just break down uh, the rest of the costume I have these pants here um, these pants are wicked awesome I also have the gloves here these are the gloves that I use for Aragorn's costume use just as well there's brown gloves um, in there I explained that I just like literally went to Value Village or a thrift store cut off the fingers and just use those as my generic brown cut off finger gloves not more accurate than that these are wicked awesome these are pants that I bought uh, they look really dark on screen it probably is compared to the rest of the blue um, but it ties in with some of these darker blues these are wicked you can get these at any thrift store in the uniform section these are police pants uh, or military pants they have all the military grade you know everything these are actually really good for work pants if you want cheap work pants that you can use um, if you're doing any outdoor stuff or any anything where it's a little bit abrasive on your pants um, these are fantastic I want to just buy a whole bunch of uniform pants. Unfortunately, I'm really small. I'm a small guy as a whole, um, and they don't often carry the size that I need. But every so often, I, I explore and I find uniform. Anything that's in the uniform section is great, great quality, and they're like brand spanking new. And they're just absolutely fantastic so i've been scouting different types of blues at the end of the day i want it to be subtle so i did a very dark blue set of pants on top of that um so once you have the blue pants and then you have here what i have over here i have these really kind of old military boots that i bought from a, a military outlet from a long time ago these were like 15 bucks or 20 bucks when i bought them and they're they just kind of add support and they just kind of they tie in this whole captain america um 
look to it. And then what happened was um, my wife does a lot of horseback riding. And over the years, she collects all these kind of like, uh, what do you call them? They cover your boots. They're like boot covers, leather boot covers. And so I'm sure you can find these on like GG or eBay or anything like that, or a thrift store or any kind of used horse place. But uh, these worked out great. We are, you know, our boot sizes are roughly the same size, so they are pretty tight, but these fit right onto the boot and these cover uh, like Captain America's uh, kind of, I don't know, you know, whatever covers his legs, these, these kind of like leather covers. So as soon as you have the, the pants on, you have the boot at the bottom, and then you cover everything up with this leather, um, uh, kind of this riding boot leather cover thing. And when it ties all together, it looks beautiful. So <clears throat> these pieces you're going to have to find on your own. I can't put links in the description below. I can't because you need to find something locally or something that fits for you. But this is a great idea. Just use, um, you know, if it's worn in, it looks like it's been worn in by Captain America kind of thing. Ultimately, everything else here is super, super clean, so it doesn't really work that way all the time. But uh, it's a great way to uh, find a quick solution to <clears throat> covering your boots. Okay, we'll move on to the shield. The shield, at, at the time, they came out with those legendary series where um, it was like $88 from Walmart. This was, it was like the last blowout sale. And what I didn't know is that I bought one of these and it was one of the last, literally the last ones you can buy from Walmart. And it was part of their legendary series. And it went down to 88 bucks. And then from there, they went kaputs and they went absolutely, they said they are selling no more of these uh, toys or no more of these shields. I literally grabbed probably the last one from the local or the Walmart that I was buying it from. But since then, don't don't worry, since then there's other companies that came out and they did like these wicked shields that come out, but um, you'll have to do your own research in terms of A, how much do you want to pay for a shield and B, if you, I don't know, the build quality. I've seen some, some people build some of those shields that they run over with their car or something crazy. Like I really don't need it that extensive. I just want something that looked high quality and really beautiful and it has so you can see the legendary series is that is that shield alone as you see with every piece that i've made so far from aragorn i have the original actual sword for star wars i have one of those ultra saber lightsabers for this one i have the shield i try and get one piece that really sells the costume okay so if you look at you'll see the shield way before you see the quality of my shirt you know so whether you're at cosplay or you're doing halloween stuff um when you add those kinds of details that's what makes your your whole kind of suit pop okay we're gonna go into the last two items which is the belt and the piece in the back i have on here all these metal details Let's see if you can actually hear that it's actually steel um sometimes I like to, you know, not cut corners, but sometimes I like to just kind of make something look, you know, half decent. And sometimes I like to go full board. So <laughs> I'm going to start with this belt. I'm going to take this off. <clears throat> so this belt that I created here, all that it is, is on the inside here, it's just uh, kind of a piece of, uh, what do you call it? Um, not Kevlar, but it's, uh, uh, it's just, just that really durable, um, fabric that you would use for anyway, for military belts or anything like that. And I lined it with Velcro on the outside, uh, so that I can just Velcro it together. And then the next layer here, all these pieces, these little bags and this, uh, I designed, I designed everything in illustrator. I just saw one of the belts that they had. And I re, re vectored it and I re, uh, redrew it in Illustrator to make it um, all balanced so that every every piece is quite balanced. Now, I understand that this is pretty big, like it is a pretty big belt. Like when you put this on, it feels bulky and big. You can substitute this EVA foam that I have here. This is all EVA foam. You can substitute all that with leather and actually make it quite a bit less thick and bulky 
Uh, but I want it to be a little bit more cartoony. So that's why I went with the EVA foam. And what I did was <clears throat> the same fabric that I have on the inside here, I put on the outside as a texture. Um, and you can get this from any kind of fabric store. So what I did was I drew this up in Illustrator and then I'll have to show you because in my house, in my basement, I created, I built this, um, this work table, but on the top of the work table facing straight down onto my table is one of those little projectors that you can buy. I hook it up to my laptop and whatever I have on my laptop as my image projects straight down onto my work table. And with that, I'm able to trace out anything that I need. So I traced out the EVA foam and some of the bags here. Um, so this kind of fabric, what do you call it? I forget the type of material. It's kind of like this. Anyway, it's like belt material anyway. So I have, I have that detail on the inside, on the outside, and I have smaller versions of that that you can get from any fabric store uh, on, on the front, on the, in the center portion of these little pocket bags. All I did was I, these can all kind of spin cause they're just on rivets. Um, and they're, they're non-functional. You can actually make full leather ones if you wanted to, I just didn't have that kind of time. Um, and then I have all these little metal details. I used to go to a place where you used to be able to use laser cutters and plasma cutters and all that good jazz. And I got, I kind of got hooked on it, but I, I, I love the quality of something that's laser cut and laser etched. So I went to a company a local company and through my brother he helped me outsource it it was a little bit more expensive than i thought but i thought i'd give it a shot i designed all of these in illustrator like the belt buckle and these little attachment pieces that you see here and these these uh, metal pieces here as well as the back portion of 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 the shoulder strap which i'll show you in just a moment and the thing that i found is that you know <clears throat> it's probably printed on some steel that's a little bit too thick, thicker than I want it to be. You want it to be pretty thin and just sell the sell the texture. Now you can paint these, you can paint metallic on a piece of wood or whatever the case may be, but I wanted to go a little bit further and actually make it out of steel. So that's what these are. I printed them about, sent it over, they cut them for me, brought them back to me, and then I just assembled them. I just put them together and made this belt so instead of putting this back on so it covers this this actually sits inside my pants in my belt the belt will sit and cover that emblem right there okay let's move on let's just do the last piece of the puzzle here these are shoulder straps so they go on and then when they're on they're pretty legit and what happens is so here's there's what the back looks like it looks pretty sick it looks awesome the thing about putting your your um, shield on the back is you're covering all that detail, which I mean, if I was carrying my little daughter and in my arms and carrying candy bags and whatever, I could just throw the shield onto the back you know, through the traps and they are good to go. Because um, these are all Velcroed at the bottom here, I can take this off and slip, slip these through. So like I mentioned before, I designed this in Illustrator here. Let's see if I can give you, I don't know if it will adjust here, but uh, I designed these in Illustrator as a couple separate pieces. There's actually one, two, three, four, five, five separate pieces and then line them all up and actually instead of welding them on, I just glued them on with this just really intense, intense glue. And then what I did was I took leather from any leather shop I told them to cut it about two inches, two and a half inches, and I cut them down myself. And then that same strapping that I was using on every other feature, I put on the very center. And then you just get kind of any buckle you want. This is the most accurate buckle that I can get for the short amount of time. Here's a flat buckle. I could have designed those and got them cut as well. Um, but I decided just to kind of go with any buckle that I can have and go with. Now this thing, when it's on, it just looks so legit. Now I did go a little bit overboard on this one and I did go a little bit overboard on probably the, those, those details, but sometimes I just really like to push those details to the limits. What I also did on the inside of these straps, right where the shoulders are, I glued in a magnet on both shoulders 
And then what I did was I glued two magnets onto the shirt because I needed it to sit very high. And the only way for it, it's either to keep it really tight or you can actually glue some magnets and they just snap into place and they just stay there. So I hope you like this build. It's a little bit different than any other costume build that I've done in the past, uh, but I hope you absolutely enjoyed this. Uh, again, if you have any questions on how I did certain things or if you need some help, I'm always, always um, there to help. As of my channel, I really want to get into different types of forms of art. So from digital painting to actual airbrushing and modeling paints to costume design to uh, interviewing um, different professions in, in their craft. Uh, my wife is a fantastic blogger and she does amazing, amazing edits and she's just absolutely flourishing in her craft and I'd like to interview her and just kind of give you some digital um, maybe how to edit some images like she does. There's a lot of stuff that I want to bring to the channel that teaches people different forms of art and how they can bring that into their world and create what they want to create. Anyway, that's it for me today. Uh, it's a little bit of a long video, but uh, it was all worth it at the end. Okay, see you later. Bye.